Hello, what is up guys? This is Mike Loris and I'm going to bring you another game from the Star Series Season 3. This is going to be between EG and M5. Each team known as that. Whereas Evil Geniuses versus Moscow 5. EG is going to first pick the Chen. Moscow 5 responding with the Shrak and Naga Siren. So really, there is nothing of surprise that is going on here. EG most likely going to slap Malk onto that Chen, but... Um, honestly guys, I'm going to be honest with you, I did, this time, look at the timer, and that was purely by accident. And you know what? Yeah, it's going to be a long one, but it's okay, I have stories, or, it's, yeah, a story, I don't know, is it one or two? I don't know. It doesn't matter, but I have stuff to burn that's to pass the time, and it should be fun, so hopefully we see a little bit of farming, so we could actually get those out, but even more ideally, we would see a lot of action. Evil Geniuses! Gonna go big with the AoE team fight. They already do have that black hole as well as the Ravage. And really, um, well, it's a good way to go, especially when the other team has a Naga Siren. Because, well, usually when you have a Naga Siren, you want to have some setup. So you could use some sort of spell in combination with that Siren Ultimate. But EG, they're gonna pick and then essentially, by doing that, ban out Enigma and Tidehunter from the available selection of heroes from Moscow 5. So smart play by Evil Geniuses. That will give them a pretty solid support lineup. They don't really have a hero that's, like, dedicated support. I guess Chen could be considered to be that role, but usually um, Enigma and Tidehunter require roughly the same amount of gold. Although, uh, I guess Chen could just sacrifice all of his, all of his well-being and stuff like that, and then Enigma and Tide could pick up the pipe and mech and all those useful items. M5, they're going to pick up a nature's profit. That'll give them a little bit of global presence. And of course, an option to jungle as well. EG banning out the disruptor. It's pretty much a top tier second ban hero. Or a second ban phase hero. Even though that doesn't make much sense. It's pretty much the place that disruptor has been put in for almost every single game, really. EG's disruptor, a really, really bad. powerful hero. And uh, I've been watching a little bit more of 0.75, but not really all that much, so my knowledge of 0.75 is very, very hazy. I just know that Twin Headed Dragon, oh, uh, Jakiro, is pretty hot shit right now. And it's Batrider, too, so hopefully we'll see some of those in a relatively short time period, because this is still not 0.75. Kind of getting a little antsy for it, guys. I kind of want to see some replays with the new patch installed. But I guess we will cross that bridge when we come to it. The bands coming out from Moscow 5 involve a CK. That makes complete sense. I mean, Evil Geniuses, they have a giant team fight and support lineup. What they need right now is just the hard carry for later on. EG actually going to ban out the Sand King. Um, I would have thought that EG would have probably wanted to take that for themselves. The as well, really. But EG get the Brewmaster banned out from them, and they ban out the Sand King themselves. Moscow 5, I mean, they have a decent amount of stun. EG, not as much. They do have a lot of ultimates, and that will give them stuns through that way. But, uh, not the most reliable if you're going to, like, cancel off a teleportation scroll or something like that. But EG, they have a support lineup, so what they need right now is damage. I do think that a really good one for them to pick up is going to be a Dragon Knight. Because Dragon Knight, he is, or he could be played as a pretty hard carry. Very durable as well. And that would fit perfectly. I'm telling you, EG. They're going to pick up a Queen of Pain instead, get that solo mid lane down pat. But if they pick up a Dragon Knight, then when he gets to level... I think he could even get the Dragon Form at level 11, level 2 Dragon Form at that point. Or even the... Uh, well, of course, once he gets to level 16, then obviously Dragon Knight just kills everything. But that AoE... That AoE will combo off very well with EG's teamfight lineup, assuming, of course, that they could actually get it down. Evil Geniuses, they kind of need a damage hero. I mean, the team fight will carry them through for the early mid stage of the game, but M5, with proper positioning, will ensure that they do not die to that. Or don't, even if they do die to it, they won't like lose Raxes, or the losses will be minimal. So EG, pick up the Dragonite, and then you'll be happy. Ooh, or a Void, that could also be really good. Show stopping ultimates right there. Three of them. And that's a lot of show stopping. M5, what are they going to go for? They do have a primary farmer, as well as support for that farmer. A good kill lane in that also. 
Nagasar and Lashrak net into a split earth, and then everyone is very, very unhappy. Everyone on the other team is very unhappy, at least. Nagasaren's just happy as a clam, because she's a fish. It's like seafood. Okay. And they also have Nature's Prophet, who's uh, kind of a little bit hard to place as far as like gold and experience requirements, but he's going to be jungling, so uh, he's just going to act as that X factor for M5. They can also pick up the Windrunner, get that hard lane down, EG. With their current lineup, it looks like Enigma is actually going to be soloing the hard lane. Use those Eidolons to deny as much as they can, and then it's going to be Tidehunter, and then this final hero on the bot lane, supported also by Chen whenever he decides to leave his jungle. And then Queen of Pain on the mid lane. So those are my predictions for EG. M5, well, they have a little bit of flexibility right now. Nature Prophet could jungle. Of course, he could also lane the hard lane, then Windrunner could go mid or something like that, or Nagasar on the Shrak could also go mid. We've seen that a couple of times. And Snare into a Split Earth into Edict. It's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. And it's hard to avoid because Naga Sirens and Snare is such a long range. And it's uh, pretty much 100% guarantee for Lashrak to land a stun right after that. And Queen of Pain, well, if you chain stun her down, she's a very soft hero. Kind of relies on mobility to keep herself alive. And, you know, what you can't do when you're netted to the floor, you cannot move. So you won't have any mobility there. Queen of Pain will probably die to that. So if M5 want to go with that route, then it could be pretty good. Of course, if Queen of Pain is fast enough, then she could blink out before the net actually lands on her, and then hopefully get enough distance between her and the dual lane so that she would be able to survive. But M5, I think they need another supporty hero or a mid hero. Is Invoker? Invoker's banned out. Um, they could go for a bounty hunter, actually. Windrunner put her in the on the safe lane top. They just prop in the jungle and then dual lane the mid lane. I do think that it'll benefit M5 if they put the Lashrak and Naga Siren combo against the Queen of Pain. Because Queen of Pain usually is used to being the aggressor, but in a situation where she's up against two heroes that have so much kill combo potential, well then she cannot be the aggressor. It just isn't going to happen, because if she steps up, she's going to die. Okay, there you go, e EG. I accepted that pick. It's pretty good. It fits with the motif, really, the giant AoE damage. And Juggernaut will be able to scale late game as well, and also have a pretty decent early game. Gush and Juggernaut, Blade Fury, that's pain right there. So I like the pickup from EG. Kind of uh, similar to Dragonite and Void in, his, in how his ultimate works for the team. Not necessarily an anti-mage, which will be a little bit more out of place. But Juggernaut will give EG a very powerful early lineup as well as some late game security. Although with the build that they have now, it kind of looks like that they're going to aim to do a little bit more work early on than later on. If Juggernaut does get a battle for you though, he could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Siren, until of course Siren gets a heart or something like that. And then Juggernaut will have a little bit of difficulty clearing out those illusions, and if Naga Siren has Diffusal Blade, well that'll give her a lot of opportunities to burn out mana of very important heroes. Tidehunter, known for having a very low mana pool, Juggernaut also kind of reliant on his mana. But Diffusal Blade could do a lot of work. M5. Well, what are you gonna go? What are you gonna go for? You could go for anything, really. Nature's Prophet and Windrunner in the same team just gives your same, just gives your lane so much versatility. They're gonna go for an Ancient Apparition, so I do think it's gonna be a Nature's Prophet solo lane, Windrunner solo lane, and then a tri lane. Unless they're gonna do something silly with the AA, but I doubt that's gonna happen. But hell, and Snare into a Cold Feet is also really good. It's uh. I think less track and ensnare is a little bit better combo than AA and ensnare, but hey, they're both good. They both have a huge amount of kill potential. Fortunately for EG is that uh, if the Juggernaut does get netted down, they can just spin and then, well, what are they going to do in that spin duration? They have to fall back. They don't have any choice. But now we are in the game. Let's go over the player assignments. We do have on the M5 a little bit of swapping actually. We have Sadoi on the Lashrak solo, playing the Nature's Prophet, Stalioner on the Naga Siren, Dread playing the Ancient Apparition, and Nexus on that Windrunner heading towards the top lane. On the top lane for EG, we have Demon heading up there. He has a lot of restored items, but this with the one salve, that does indicate that he's going to be soloing that top lane. I'll explain why in just a little bit. J.O. apparently wearing the stand in tag on the Queen of Pain. It doesn't really seem like he's a stand in. But whatever, it's J.O. on the Queen of Pain. Malk, of course, on the Chen. Fear on the hard carry. Oh my god, Juggernaut, what have you done to your head? So he casted that Blade Fury, and something went wrong, and then he decapitated himself. It's really, 
really horrible to see. And B Diz is gonna be playing the Tide Hunter pirate style. But yeah, Demon with three clarities and the Sage Mask plus a healing salve. That is full on. I'm going to be soloing this top lane. Because when you are soloing a lane as an Enigma, especially this long lane, then you what you really want to do is focus on denying. You want to get your conversions from your own creeps to deny as much experience as you can to the other lane. And to do that, well, you need mana. So that explains the Sage's Mask and as well as Clarity Potions. Although, usually, if you do see Clarities, a lot of Clarities on Enigma, that does indicate a jungle build. But a jungling Enigma usually does not have any restoratives. So this Halve is purely if he gets jumped. Other than that, he's probably going to be very cautious. Use the conversions to... Uh, use the conversions to deny as much experience as he can. And then use them as a uh, last-hitting tool. Malk has sent one of the... It's not a Mega melee creep is just a regular melee creep back to the base that will put as much momentum back into the lane in demon's favor as possible you can only see two creeps made it through so that's going to be advantageous for the enigma at least for the short run Staliana and solo are going to dual lane this mid lane Jo has got to be really really careful he has to be quick on that blink button or else if he takes an ensnare he's going to be in a ton of hurt solo going to play a little bit farther up just trade hits with Jo. split earth going to miss as J.O. blinks away from that. On the bottom lane, Fear is going to be free farming. Sedoi doing pretty much what the Enigma wants to do, except these Eidolons, I think, do have a little more movement speed. Then, yeah, they do have a lot more movement speed, actually, than the uh, conversions. So you, Sedoi pulling the creep wave back towards his tower. Going to guarantee that he gets at least something from this lane. Although, really, if worse comes to worse and Sedoi feels that he's under too much pressure, he could just bail. And then, you know, jungle these camps because they're not really doing a whole lot there. So Nitro Prophet does have a lot of options available to him. He can't really do much to stop Fierce Farm, though. Demon on the top lane. Already burned through two salves. Or two uh, clarities, I'm sorry. Using those Eidolons, but hey. Oh! Huh, denied by Demon. I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dread. Really? I don't think anything is going to come out of this lane for quite a bit until Pink decides to get aggressive. Nexus on the Windrunner, but even then, I'm pretty sure the Enigma could be decently safe in this lane. I do feel like Sedoi is probably the one in the most trouble if B-Diz circles around, lands a Gush, which currently has no experience because of these uh, Treants, I guess, blocking off the pole. Very good play from Sedoi, using those Treants to hold those Golems right in the camp so that B-Diz is unable to get that stack and also unable to pull them as well, so... Invisibility. Bidiz has absolutely nothing, doesn't even have a point of gush. Although I think he should get it. Just so he can get that gush uh, gush spin combo. Try to kill off Sedoi. Mm, it's gonna be a little bit difficult though. But EG, they also do have that dedicated jungler. And Chen is looking for a couple of stacks, probably gonna try to search for a Wildkin. Is there any one? No, there isn't. So he's probably gonna try to tornado those down. Solo just eating a couple of tower shots because they taste good. She's forcing J.O. back 1 for 1 versus 16 for 8. So Staliana is getting a ton of farm in this lane. J.O. really got to force to play cautiously because of the constant threat of the Shrak. Split Earth into a net is going to mean so much pain, possibly even a death for J.O. <laughs> Staliana and Solo just doing their work, doing their job, taking the creep kills and denying the creep kills, pressuring J.O. back. This mid lane is not getting anything. Alright, so, um, nothing's happening, except for the tornado clearing. I don't know why you put this Wilkin so far away. I feel like you don't actually have to have it that far. You can have it right here, right? Because they're, uh, he's getting farm. Chen is doing the tornado clearing as he picks up a level 3 just from one creep. So good work, Wilkin. Now he's going to send him back, get a little bit more mana on him. Of course, the Wilkin's tornado does have a really long cooldown. What cooldown is it? 70. It's pretty large for a regular spell, for a creep spell, really. But hey, you could slap it down in this mid lane and then solo and Staliana, although eh, it's probably not going to do all that much versus those two heroes because they could just stun it with a split earth or ensnare, something like that. And I didn't... What the hell is with these items? Do you guys know what this is? I have no idea what those tiny icons are. I don't know if that's a bug with these .74 replays. Or if that's my Dota being dumb. Either way, 
Uh, well, we have very tiny icons as well as the tiny bands in the uh, drafting phase, so tiny everything in this game, I guess. We don't really have all that much happening. Both teams just farming. It's going to be the Nagas Iron farming versus the Headless Juggernaut farming. But Sudoi 13 for 4 versus 3 for 6. So Enigma's not having a, as good a time as Sudoi is on this bot lane. He is, isn't really available to put on a lot of pressure to that Nature Prophet. Nature Prophet has been messing with the Tidehunter for quite a while now. But Juggernaut with level 6, if he could somehow catch this Juggernaut in a spin, and a spin Omni Slash, which he does have enough mana for, just barely, that'll be able to take out that Nature Prophet and pick himself up a solo first blood. Net onto Jo. he's going to take a lot of Edict damage. Solo with the Edict damage does pick up the first blood on this mid lane, as Jo is the first to fall for EG, and <laughs> of course an instant regeneration rune usage by Solo get everything back, full health, full mana, and then in three seconds he's going to have another point of Edict, Shackle, Demon, onto the top lane, Dread is going to be there to get the Cold Feet as well, and Zoy has teleported in on this, that's going to pick up Nexus, another kill, Good shot, right? and with three heroes on this top lane, Zoy with three levels of that of those uh, Treants, I do think they are going to be able to take down the top lane tower, the mid lane is getting pressured extremely heavily by Sol Stallioner and Solo, they are going to take this down, Jo is around though, so he could look towards a deny, he is going to get it, Good deny by Jo. Top lane, unfortunately, not so as lucky. Bot lane for the Dire. Fear gonna go straight in for Dread, pressuring him back, threatening him with that Omni Slash. Beat is gonna take a cold feet, and he's gonna have to fall back. Shackle onto the Wildkin, and he's gonna latch it to Malk, actually. No follow up there. It's only level 1 Shackle, level 2 Shackle. But Fear, I feel like he could have killed that AA if he just wanted to burn his Omni Slash, but he saved it. So, M5 currently. Two towers ahead, two kills ahead. Are they going to be two Roshans ahead by the time we get any more kills or towers? Probably not. I hope not, because then that'll mean this game is like literally the most boring game I've ever seen ever. Fear is moving into this mid lane. He could go for a very easy kill on Solo, but they're going to go for Jo first. Nuking damage coming out, going to be huge, and Jo's going to go down to the Lestrack. Fear going to spin down this Lestrack. No chance in hell for him. Does he want to go for Stallion? There's a ton of creeps here. Oh, he could go for the core. Oh. I feel like he could have gone for the core. He's kind of weak, though, so he probably didn't want to push it. Beat is, is around as well. Pressuring back that Naga Siren, but if they give up one for one. Probably not that worth it, although Juggernaut kills are very, very valuable. Juggernaut, now with phase boots, could go for a Battle Fear. I do think that'll be a very good build, because he needs to be able to do the damage late game, and he also would like to clear off the Naga Siren illusions, and I cannot click... The minimap with that giant experience bar in the way. J.O. is going to get a shadow strike onto Nexus. Blink in for the scream onto Dread as well as Nexus. Beat is Gush, the Windrunner. Windrunner moving very slowly. Going to take an anchor smash as well. The Centaur a little bit too far away. Ice Ball going to fly. Not hit anyone. And now Sudoi has captured two. They're both going to eat their way out. Net onto J.O. He is unable to get away from here. Just going to burn all his mana. Sent back to the base. Not in time though. Naga Siren with the kill. Windrunner with another kill on B Diz. M5 just all over the map, and Malk, I don't know what the hell Malk is trying to do here. He's trying to survive, but I don't think it's going to last. He gets brought down by Stallioner, giving him a double kill. So EG taking a very early disadvantage in this game. M5 capitalizing on the kill advantage that they have picked up in the early stage to take down the third tier 2 tower. So now all of EG's tier 2s are vulnerable. And all of M5's towers are still up. Oh, okay, didn't want to do that. All of M5's towers are still up. Fear with the Omni Slash still in his pocket. Might look for a pick onto Sedoi. He could teleport out of this, but if he gets caught with the spin, then he's pretty much screwed. Go for it, Fear. Go, go, go. Oh, he sees him. He sees him. Sedoi is so screwed. Omni Slash onto the Nature Prophet. Now Fear is stuck. <laughs> well. I guess so. On the top lane, huge brawl. How did I miss that? Beatus is going to go down to the combo of Stallioner and Dread. Both the Tidehunter and the Enigma. Tidehunter without the ultimate Enigma and holding on to the ultimate. Got getting brought down by Stallioner, who's getting really, really big right now. Oh, Treants. Ooh, good courier move. Fury's going to get out of there. Don't know how he managed to trap himself for that. Omni Slash is a silly spell. But M5, 3 to 8. Fury is. Well, he's been involved in most of the kills. Who actually got killed on that lane? Did Demon get a kill on the top lane? Demon did get a kill. He got a kill on Lestrack, but he got brought down by AA and Naga Siren. Lestrack did take a fall there, but hey, I think M5 would be more than happy to make that trade. 
EG, they're a little bit far behind. A little bit far behind? What the hell does that mean? They're a little bit behind. The golden experience reflecting that. Because you can't be far behind just a little bit. That kind of isn't how the English language works. Smoke from Dread, Nexus, and Solo. They're looking towards the top lane where Demon has no knowledge of this. They need to get a Shackle shot onto this Enigma. They're going to force Staff Nexus in. Shackle not going to latch, though. Is there a Split Earth? Split Earth is going to hit. Cold Feet is going to take as well, but they don't want to die this tower. Demon near Frozen taking Ice Ball to the face, and Demon's going to shatter. Oh, no, the Power Shot taking him out, actually. Asadoi even teleported in for that. Going to pop off that Buckler, give himself and his creeps a lot of armor. They're going to work on this Tier 2 tower. But everyone from EG is here. Omnislash not up for another 30 seconds. J.O. going to blink right in. Going to Shadow Strike Solo, so they might want to just go for the Shrack. But a two-man split Earth might buy Solo enough time to get out of here. B-Diz is chasing. He wants to get a Gush off. Oh, there's a Sleep from Salyaner. No one's really clumped up, though. Nexus could get a two-man Shackle shot, and Melk and Beatus, if he does it well. Melk, Shackle to a Centaur, actually. Probably better. Beatus is going to gush Nexus. Try to do as much damage as he can. Nexus taking a lot of nuking damage. Beatus, is he able to take this kill? Demon is going to bring up the rear. Kill Solo with this black hole, I feel. He should be able to do that, but Fear taking a lot of damage. He does have Omnislash, finally. Now's the perfect time to use it, especially since he's luring Dread and Solo. But now the Treants get created, so Fear does not have a good opportunity for this Omnislash. He's going to have to burn it, though, if he wants to survive. Gonna take a nice ball, dodge it. No, he's just gonna take it like a man. M5, 13 for 5, taking a very good fight. Ravage not yet up on the Tide Hunter. If Ravage was there, that would have been such a great fight for EG. But unfortunately for him, well, he simply did not have the levels. So Doig can teleport in on Demon, trying to look for this Enigma. Treants, clear him off. Nexus is on the chase as well. Looking for a shackle angle. I think he just has to do a mini stun. And there it is. The net is gonna land on Demon. Now Demon is gonna go down. Sprouted in a cage. Taking that cold feet and Staliano with the Riptide gonna get himself yet another kill. There's a score. 406. Naga Siren is looking to be very strong in this game. 406, 2300 gold. She could straight up rush the relic. She has a power treads though. Uh, that might indicate that she's not gonna go for that build, but uh, I do think relic would be pretty good. So just because she could get it so early. I mean like from early radiance? Yes, please. I do want that. Solo, flying solo. He's going to run into a centaur as well as beat his gush and a stomp. Stompy, stompy on solo. He does get the split earth out, however. Fear is here with phase boots, though, and he's getting blocked by the centaur, actually. Phase boots on, not on cooldown, and the force staff away will prevent the Lushrak from dying. Very early force staff from the Windrunner. He used it like two or three times to great effect so far. But she was free farming on the top lane. She was getting protected farm versus an Enigma who couldn't do anything. So, what would you expect from Windrunner? Probably an early mech. I feel. Oh no, Nature Prophet has the mech. There you go, guys. Sadoi picking up a 12 minute mech, even though he was on that bot lane versus two. Beat is looking for a gush and stall honor. If he sees him, he's going to gush him. There's the. Go oh, you have Omni Slash and Spin. Kill this bitch. Kill her. There's the spin. Going to go straight for Stallion Honor. Gush to follow up as well. Now, Stallion Honor does have a net. But she's pretty darn screwed. Invisibility rune. Oh, that's what they were waiting for. Vita does have sentry wards, but unfortunately guessed the wrong direction for her to run. And now four in the Roshan pit for M5. Does EG know about this? They do know about this, or they should know about it. Ever since Dredge just sent an ice ball from that direction. Roshan is slowly getting brought down. Everyone from M5 still very healthy because they have so many things to tank for them. Rashawn slowly getting ticked down. He is going to go down without any of EG's heroes walking in there and trying to disrupt that. This, these heroes, who are they actually going to put that uh, Aegis on? Stallion is a little bit too far away. It's going to be Windrunner. So Windrunner is getting a lot of love this game. Giving, getting a lot of farm. Getting the Aegis even. And really, um, I think that was the right choice. I think Lashrak could also be a decent choice at that Aegis, but he's at this point way too soft. You could bring him down twice so easily, and then Aegis is essentially lost once that happens. But both teams, they seem to be a little bit content to just farm. Nagas Iron does have an ultimate orb, so probably rushing Manta. You can go for a mass illusion build. The AoE from EG, I mean, like, there is a Queen of Pain, but she's been shut down pretty hard this game. 0 4. There is also the Juggernaut, who currently. Does not have any uh, items to indicate what build he's going. Drums on Juggernaut after phase boots. That's you know pretty much standard. 
It's his next item that's going to really define what type of juggernaut player this is going to be, or what type of juggernaut that uh, is going to be played this game. Could go for like a more utility tanky juggernaut, which I doubt he's going to go. He's most likely going to go damage, whether that means Desolator or Battle Fury. Either way, it's all good. Looks like EG, they're gearing up to smoke, all five smoked in the jungle, and now they see someone mid lane. Are they just going to go for it? Ravage is finally up for this Tide Hunter, 14 minutes in. It's about freaking time. Black Hole up on the Enigma as well. They could get a kill onto Staliana, but he does have a Solid Siren, so they have to chain st stun him perfectly. I don't think, or at least kill him during the Omni Slash. I don't think that's actually a viable option, though. And Naga Siren Ultimate will waste the smoke, will waste any spells that they use to try to kill her. They're still looking around this mid lane, but everyone from M5 has disappeared. M E.G. not getting anything out of that smoke. They're instead just going to go straight for this tier 1 tower. M5, they're really far away to defend this fortification to slow them down. But I don't think M5 could actually defend this tower, although they're going to try. Sedoi in the bot lane does have the teleportation in. Here comes the Naga Siren Sleep. Only catching Fear and Melk, though. Oh, no, the Courier. You don't want to be there. Beatus is also caught out as well. Ice Blast going to hit on Beatus. There's the Ravage. Going to hit Stalyana as well as Solo. Instantly getting bursted down by the Queen of Pain. Naga Siren goes down as well to the nuke. Sedoi in a very bad position right now. Demon unable to get that black hole on him. Doesn't want to use it on a single person either. Sedoi is on the run, but I do think it's a waste of time for EG to try to take that down. They should instead look towards this tier 1 tower. Nexus is still here. Someone has to pressure that back. Queen of Pain does pick up that tower. And now Fear still holding on to that Alma Slash. Only used it once so far this game. The Courier... You should probably move core here. This doesn't seem like a very safe place. There you go. But EG taking two free kills even after getting initiated upon. And really, that's the beauty of the Juggernaut. If he gets slept, well, you you know what you're doing that entire time when he's sleeping. You're just mashing that Q button. Don't stop clicking Q. Or if he's using legacy keys, then uh, F? I want to say it's F. Did you know that Omni Slash used to have a hotkey N? Just look at your keyboard and realize how horrible that is. Like you, you, you would have your hand like near the A button, near the one, two, three keys for micro or whatever, and then you would have to go all the way down there and hit N. You have no idea how many times I died because I kept on hitting M. It was awful. I think they changed it to Z though, which uh, it still doesn't make any sense because all of Warcraft's uh, hotkeys were like based off of the uh, one of the letters of the. Uh, of the skills. But N, really? That was there for a long time, too. I'm really surprised they actually kept it like that. It's just like a... such a small inconvenience that's such, so easily fixed. But really, like, all of Omni Slash, all the uh, letters are on the right side of the keyboard. I guess S for Slash isn't, and A also, but those are used for stop and attack, hard-coded into the Warcraft 3 engine. So you can't get around that, and... Omni, so I guess H is an option. I don't know, but they chose N. God, what fools! What fools! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But both teams—they're just farming up. So I think it's time for stories, guys. What? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, until something happens, I'm just gonna tell you the story of the really awful CM game. So yesterday I was playing a CM game and usually I don't play CM just cause it's really fucking stressful and people are like oh who should we ban out? Well you know these guys are being played by these top tier guys so we should probably do that run a uh, you know solo lane this over here and I'm, whenever that happens I'm just like guys that's not how CM works like the pros play these heroes because when everyone's playing at the top top tiers of play that those are the heroes that work best and in this stage of play I mean I don't know I like to think of myself as high bracket last time I checked I was in the very high uh, thing very high matchmaking bracket I guess that's what it's called oh they're gonna run strange and Nexus instant blink from J.O. taking a lot of spell damage stunned up as well but she did manage to get that wind run out she does have the Aegis as well as a hood so wind run is gonna get away story on hold guys as EG pushes down the top tier one tower in the bot lane Stalyaner has bought down the tier 2 tower, so this is not a good trade from EG, but really they need all the towers that they can get, but losing their own tier 2s in exchange for this is not a good way to go about that. Alright, so they're going to keep going. Push also onto the mid lane. Sedoi is going to be met with the teleportation from Jo. Jo doesn't isn't really that strong though. Four deaths. 
I mean, three assists is great and everything, but Sadoi could probably toe to toe that Queen of Pain, level 12 versus level 9. And it's going to be real close if they do go toe to toe, but with the mech and phase boots, I do think the Ninja Prophet could win in a straight up fight like that. Especially when, you know, you have a Nong Siren backing you up. He's actually gone for Lincoln Sphere, a very defensive item for Stalyaner. I don't really think that's all that necessary. I mean, like. Gush, Malthus, Shadow Strike, I mean, that's not really that important to block off. It's not exactly a glimpse which will kill your ass. But uh, M5 taking another tower, losing a tower in exchange. But a tier 2 for a tier 1, always worth it. And Juggernaut, looks like he's going to go for full Blade Master mode, going to go for Amanda style. And if you don't know what I mean by that, then you need to go play Warcraft 3, because Blade Master is OP. He had his ultimate spell was basically Blade Fury, except it like lasted for a million years and it did a ton of damage, ton more damage. Could you believe? And he had Wind Walk, which is like Clank's Skeleton Walk, Critical Strike, and uh, what was it? And uh, Mirror Images, which didn't do any damage, so they were kind of bad. See, I really don't want to talk about this game just because nothing's happening. I guess I will like jump right into it when something actually does happen, but until then, I'm just going to take it easy this cast, guys. I hope you don't mind, but really, what am I going to say? Look at them. They're clearing out the creep wave. They're going down the bot lane. EG Fear leading the way with that big old juggernaut sword. No head, but he still has a helmet for some reason. I don't know how he does it, even though he does have that helmet on his head in the icon in-game. His portrait is not going to show that ice ball flying in. Going to hit onto Beatus. Nature Prophet Ultimate as well. Beatus taking a ton of damage. Luckily for him, that Kraken Shell did save him, but <laughs> didn't save Malk. And the poor Kobold just wanted a drink from his cup. He's gonna die. The beat is very lucky proc on the Kraken Shell there. If it didn't proc, he would have shattered for sure. Fear with the level 4 healing ward. He is going to bring that Tide Hunter up to full health, but I do think Solo and Nexus on this bottom lane can defend it. Stalyaner, meanwhile, in the mid lane going toe to toe with Jail. Gonna take that Shadow Strike with a Lincoln Sphere proc. Saliana is going to fall back after pressuring back that Queen of Pain, and he can keep going, actually. He's kind of low on mana. Lincoln Sphere will give him a lot of mana, plus the Intreds with Teleportation coming in as he's getting chainsled on Saliana. He is now has to fight with Nexus, or B is, I'm sorry. Saliana does pop that ultimate and walk away. This tower in deny range, though, and it's going to get denied, unless he's Naga Siren ultimates. Yo, there you go. Jayo with the second tower denied of the game. Oh, what's going to happen over here? Demon running into Solo. And the kobolds are on his ass. Run, man. These kobolds are going to scratch you to death. Yeah, in case you guys... Uh, in case you guys haven't figured it out, I'm... Yeah, not really... Totally focused on this game. Okay, the story of the crappy CM game. So, uh, I, I queued with five people. I, or I guess I queued with four people. I was part of a five queue. And I never do that. Oh, Malk is going to get stalked by Solo. Split Earth into a Diabolic Edict. Will mean the death of Chen. Ice Ball gonna fly, just narrowly missed, but the Edict and Pulse damage, plus an Age Prophet Ultimate. Oh, the mech might save the Chen, however, and now Solo is gonna get initiated upon Jo with the Sonic Wave, plus a Shadow Strike, Force Staff out from the Lashrak, as he gets piped on him from Nexus, but he's still in a ton of danger. Force Staff gonna fly, and Solo's gonna try to teleport out of there, but the Tidehunter's Anchor Smash does do physical damage, so it does go through that barrier pr uh, provided by the pipe, and give EG a pick, and Malchus to survive. Well then, okay, the story of the horrible CM game. I queued to 5 and I never do that, but I'm like, okay, you know what, that's fine. So this guy was captain, and then the uh, team chat or whatever, like the before game chat, like when you're waiting for a game, someone was like, solo mid Lashrac. And then it's like, okay, he wants to play Lashrac, fair enough. So the first pick we do is Lashrac, and then we go into, who do we go into? I don't even remember anymore. It was so awful, I've already repressed that memory. I just remember that he third picked Warlock, and then we're just like, what the fuck is he doing? I don't know, Stalyaner might get engaged upon. Lincoln Sphere gonna block that Shadow Strike, though, so he's gonna walk away. The Lincoln Sphere, don't wanna say it's paying for itself quite yet, but it's it's well on its way. Three now on to, oh, four now, actually, uh, on EG, pushing down the mid lane. There's a tier two tower that they can get, but I do think that the bot tier one is a little bit of an easier pickup for them. EG, they're just gonna keep pushing, though. Queen of Pain going for that BKB, really 044. She hasn't been doing all that much in the early stage of the game, and as we, uh, you know, head our way into the mid into the mid late game, Queen of Pain is going to start to be less and less effective. Regardless, they could try to put some advantage in their favor. Healing Ward is not going to do anything when you have that Frost effect on you. Fear using that Blade Fury to both dispel himself and protect himself from that Shackle Shot. In the meantime, Solo 
fighting a little bit with Malk's army. He's gonna get away on the top lane to Doyle. Oh my god, how did you get this many freaking treants? That's absurd. He's gonna take down the tier 2 tower. As EG still camping out on the mid lane. Tornadoes are out, but the ice vortexes are out in force as well. If you're gonna take a split earth to the face, or I guess to the feet. And they're just going to keep going. Fortification going to slow them down. M5, I don't think they're willing to defend this. Do you know why? Because Stallion is on the bot lane pushing that in. Sedoi is on the top lane pushing that in. And all of EG just barely managed to get that tier 2. They got to fall back like right now or else they're going to start losing tier 3. Teleportation in from Jail is going to clear the top lane. Teleportation in from Vitas is going to clear that bot lane. Stallion is Lincoln's here once again eating another spell. These illusions are pretty darn tanky. They're doing a lot of damage to this tower down to 450 HP, I guess, by the time this creep wave does get thinned out. And M5 with the huge map advantage, still having all of their bottom towers intact. Top tier 2 still very much alive with full HP. They're going to go for another Rashan Sedoi. Don't think he could make another Miracle Army. I don't know how he got that got that many Treants. I mean, usually you do have enough for, for a short period of time when you have all your Treants from two casts. But those Treants look like they have a lot of time on them. So I don't... Yeah, I'm, I'm probably just crazy, guys. Solo's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roshan like a baller. He might die to the bash. Oh, no. The Treant's drawing fire, but here comes Fear. He has an Omni-Slash lineup. Jayo going to come right in. Kill Solo. Omni-Slash onto Zodoy. But he's so tanky. Nature's Prophet is unkillable. Battle Fury is Blade Fury. I'm sorry. He's going to do a little bit of damage. Jayo, Fail Shackle from Nexus. The Cold Vortexes are there. Blink out from Queen of Pain after taking a hit from that Nature's Prophet. Ice Ball going to come in. Land on no one. Only Beat is taking that Shatter effect. But EG's fear has picked up the Age of the Immortal. EG have successfully stolen Roshan. Pretty much exactly what they need to do if they want to get themselves back into this game. Because you can see the gold earned with all the towers down. Vastly in favor for M5 experience. Showing a similar trend as well. And Beat is... Well, he's pretty much screwed right here. Netted to the floor. He's going to try to teleport out of here. But good luck. Power shot through the noggin. He's going to give Windrunner yet another kill. And this chilling touch. You never see it being picked up really at all. This is not 0.75 where Chilling Touch is actually useful. This is 0.74 where it still does reduce your attack speed and you can't use it on creep, which kind of sucks. I haven't used AA yet in the 0.75 game, but anyway. Uh, so, third pick was a Warlock. And 0.75 Warlock, I mean, Warlock is pretty much one of the shittiest heroes in the game, in my opinion. I'm sure in many heroes, people's opinion. And then he picked up a Dragonite, Faceless Void, and a Nature's Prophet. Nature Prophet was second pick. So we have like two carries, even though the entire time we were talking about other heroes. And then it turns out he was on Skype with his friends, and he was just laughing at my suggestion of picking up a solo bot lane bounty hunter, which I kind of wanted to play, as well as a Chaos Knight, because Chaos Knight is baller with Lashrak. And then apparently, it gets even better. Uh, I mean, like, it was pretty much over because they were doing some like tri lane cutting and we had a fucking warlock faceless void against that lane and what the hell are you going to do against that warlock can't offer the lane anything so the guy was really angry he was speaking the whole time like talking shit like oh you guys are so you're so retarded thinking that bounty hunter is a good off laner and that ck ck is also bad you can't do anything against axe i'm like what the hell are you talking about this entire time and then eventually he goes on to say that faceless void could uh, faceless void solo could defeat viper solo on the bot lane I shit you not, words out of his mouth. Or, I mean, like, kind of, not literally out of his mouth. But that's what he said. And that is literally the funniest thing and most absurd thing, also, I've ever heard from Dota in my entire eight year career. Saliano gonna take a gush, Shadow Strike as well. Ravage gonna be burned for this as well. And a black hole demon does not wanna fuck around with this Naga Siren. Saliano does go down, but two BKBs popped, two ultimates used. EG, I do think. Oh, that was actually three ultimates used. I do think they, uh, they should calm down a little bit. I mean, yes, it's important to kill the Naga Siren, but shit, she wasn't going anywhere. Burning the Ravage and the Black Hole. I do think that was a huge waste from EG. Saliana just buys back. And now M5, they do know that all of EG's ultimates are down, so they're just going to push right in. The only thing they have to fear is the uh, Omni Slash from Juggernaut. Omni Slash, did you know that Omni Slash is the name of Cloud's limp break in Final Fantasy 7 or one of them yeah that's true guys more history lessons about the juggernaut but here comes M5's pushing squad illusions to lead the way riptiding the creeps shackle not gonna latch onto anything 
but they're gonna send the tree in straight for that tier three tower gonna take a ton of damage solo does have his edict active doing a lot of damage to fear but solo is taking a lot of damage himself Ninja Prophet ultimate bouncing through doing quite a bit of damage to these conversions ice ball gonna land onto fear denying him any healing ward potential in m5 they've warded back eg's defense did a little bit of damage to this tower which can now be denied but i don't think that's going to be what eg are interested in and M5, they can just keep doing this all day. They haven't used anything. I mean, they have used their Ice Blast, but Ice Blast is very short cooldown. Shackle, J.O. not going to latch. His Fear is on the front line, trying to clear off the creep wave. Fear is going to take cold feet as well as a ton of edict damage netted to the floor. Stalinar is gonna, just going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Juggernaut. Here comes J.O. Stalinar is going to block that Gush, and he's taking a lot of damage, though, from this Queen of Pain. There goes the Omni Slash, doing a ton of damage as well. Is he going to be able to take down Dread? No, the healing too much. J.O. with the BKB, do though, does blink through and take out the AA. Stalinar on the run, and he's going to try to teleport out of this. J.O. is going to run away. Okay, and Solo is going to be the victim here. Jay with the double kill. M5, Stalioner luckily getting out with his life. But EG, there's the defense that they needed. And they've held on, I believe, long enough so that they could wait until that black hole and ravages up. So EG, good defense by them. I should take another quick look at the okay never mind that doesn't really show us all that much that's not the button for item check item check here we go Malk has picked up the mechanism gonna hold on to a cloak so he's gonna be the one holding the pipe as well as the mech so he's gonna be a very easy target to kill if you could lock him down and with a uh, split earth with the cold feet should be possible to lock him down demon as well as Jo packing those BKBs tidehunter with nothing going for the nothing build and fear is only Picked up the Manta style. He hasn't had any item progression at all. He, oh, he has a lot of gold, though, so fair enough. Nexus is going to go for that Hex, which he's very, very close to. Dread going for the Nothing build as well. But he still has more Nothing than Tidehunter's Nothing. Sadoi with a mech and a sheep stick. Solo just going for pure bulk. Not looking to turn this into a pipe or even a hood, I don't think. He just wants that extra bit of spell resistance. Protect himself from the Queen of Pain, as well as the Tidehunter. And Stalyaner with a Vit Booster, Diffusal Blade, level 1. Why can't I close this window? There we go. It's going to go for what looks like a heart of Tarask. Let's just get that sustained mana burn going. And if she could have her illusions on the front line. The rest of her team could do a lot of work. All five from EG on the spot lane. Maybe this will be the, the chance for them to finally take this tier 1 tower. Fear is fearless. Straight for the tower. Cut it down. Cut it down. Shackle tried to dodge from man style. Luckily for him, it doesn't land anyway. Ice Blast going to fly through. He's going to hit Fear. And Fear's taking a ton of damage. going to Blade Fury right through that. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Sadoi in the bot lane has been pressuring this lane out. Once again, Jo is around to defend it, though. So the tower is only going to take a little bit of damage from this catapult as well as the little treants. But M5, they somehow still have this tower alive. This tower is very scared right now. It knows that it's getting old and that soon it's going to have to get put down. If M5 deny that tower, that'll be amazing. Oh, sorry, I just knocked my mic. Fury is holding on to a lot of dough. I feel like I still feel like a Battle Fury is worth it. I mean, usually Battle Fury this late in the game is pretty awful, but he needs creep clearing abilities. EG, they just, they just don't have enough. I mean, Anchor Smash in the front lines will get Tidehunter killed. Queen of Pain does have a huge amount of creep clearing. But, I mean, once she screams, then what? Then she got to, she's got to wait when M5 can just keep pushing, putting on the pressure. Beat is going to eat a split earth and blink board from Demon. Going to land a stun onto Solo. Second stun going to allow for Beat is get a little bit closer. There's the gush, and here's a double damage fear. One chop. And Demon with the kill. Fear is going to keep charging in. Lashrak is down. But Naga Siren ultimate is up. Ice Blast is available as well. And the bottom lane is being pushed from M5. There goes a tier 3 tower. Stalinianer and Dread. Here comes J.O. to try to defend this. Saliana, I feel like he could just sit here all day and work down this Raxus. There goes Shackle onto J.O. He's going to pop his BKB, but he's still Shackled to the floor because of that net. Saliana is going to take a Sonic Wave to the face. J.O. does survive from that. There's the instant Naga Siren ultimate pop. Stunning out. Beat is he going to teleport out. Yeah, he is going to teleport out. And Dread going to walk out. Nexus going to walk out. And in the meantime, in the mid lane, Malk is taking a lot of damage. Fear is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Stalion once again, trying to teleport away from this. And look at that net extend all the way down. Melk is still getting chased down by Sadoi Sprout. Sprout? Why you know Sprout, man? I guess he is faster, so I guess he could just walk him down, but really you have Sheep Stick. You shouldn't have to worry about using your mana like that. So EG, yeah, good job. You took a tier 3 tower. They also lost a tier 3 tower, as well as a Chen. So EG constantly getting further and further behind. 
This M5, they're starting to get some really big items up. What is Juggernaut actually going to go for? What is this? What is this? He is going for a battle. Oh my god, I am just like a prophet. Not a nature prophet, like a uh, I see the future prophet. But really? Hell yeah, I am so good. Juggernaut, getting the late battle fury to clear off those creeps. I'm a genius, guys. I know, I know. You could congratulate me, and I will have a, a signing session a little bit later. Make sure you get in line for that, because the lines will be large. M5, for a second there, it looked like they kind of wanted to smoke up, but I think they have enough power that they don't really need to smoke up. Nexus has a sheep stick of his own, and uh, Nature Prophet has one as well. So lots of disabling coming out from M5. BKBs are up on the Enigma. What is this? Nine seconds. So he's going to have a lot of free time to try to get that, uh, that black hole to be a, an effective one. Look at how much more efficient Fear is being now that he's picked up that Battle Fury. You know, I used to have trouble clearing creeps, but then I picked up a Battle Fury. It's changed my life, and now whenever I want to clear, whenever I want to clear creeps, I choose nothing but Battle Fury. Battle Fury will not solve all your problems. Please consult your doctor before purchasing the Battle Fury. Yeah, okay, guys, I'll stop now. Nation Prophet gonna go for some damage. Naga Siren, he's go she's going for mostly bulk. The damage that she offers is mostly from the armor swing and then the uh, mana burn. So I guess the Doi wants to fill a little bit of that damage roll. Nexus, wouldn't be surprised to see if he does the same thing. So then M5, will then they'll have like a whole bunch of semi-carries. It'll work out decently for them. Roshan not yet up. It'll be up in 3, 2, 1, 0. Oh yeah, as he takes flight. But all of EG, they do know the timer on Roshan. They gotta watch out though, because Stalinator could just keep sending those illusions down that bot lane and pressure EG back, and they've just gotta constantly bounce between this lane and this Roshan pit. Like, it's not the longest walk, but still, it's a walk that they would rather not take. Juggernaut does have his Omni Slash up, and in these corridors, this is perfect fighting territory for EG. Looks like they don't wanna defend this though. J.O. gonna fall back. He has to defend this creep wave, so he doesn't really have a choice, but he and Demon, they gotta go right now. M5, they're just waiting though. I mean, they should have seen the Enigma. They should have seen the Queen of Pain. They should know that they have time to go and at least do some damage to that Rashan. But I think they also do know that the Enigma's Black Hole, the Tidehunter's Ravage, the Omni Slash, the Sonic Wave, they just work so damn well in these small crevices. Beat is going to open up with a gush on Solo. Split Earth, going to latch too. And Solo might be able to run away from the Spears. Running really damn quickly, though. Does he want to burn his Omni Slash for this? No, he does not. He's going to pressure him back on the top lane, however. Nexus and Sedoi going to siege down the tower as the focus fire does come out. Teleport's coming in though, forcing back Demon, forcing back Fear as well. Battle Fury, clear him out. Do they want to go for Roshan now? Ice Blast to push all the waves. And yes, they're going to go for Roshan. Solo going to open up with Split Earth as well as the Edict. Stalion are to take the front lines with the Heart of Trask. He could tank that all day and all night. And EG, they've. I mean, Fear's still in the top lane and they need Fear. If Fear isn't there, then the Roshan is, fight is not going to go their way because they simply don't have enough damage. But M5 playing it a little bit cautiously, and really they don't have to take risks right now. They can just play it slow, play it steady. Because, well, the team fight from EG will really shine. Oh no, Fear is going to go toe to toe with Sudoi. Sudoi does hex him up and teleport out of there though. Goodbye, Sudoi is back in his fountain. Stalion and Solo once again going to go for that Roshan with a tornado, this time from Malk, I believe. Where is that little turd? There you go. Wildkin from long range, channeling that tornado, spotting out everyone. Roshan now down to half health. This is the third Roshan, so whoever gets it gets an even bigger advantage because of that cheese in addition to that Aegis. Sedoi is going to keep split pushing back. And when you have a teleportation on a 20 second cooldown, you could afford to do this. You could still effectively push a lane as well as be in that Roshan pit, albeit, albeit in essence. Naga Siren in the spot lane, a little bit in trouble, very close to Malk, it is, as well as Jo. You know what, Stalyaner is balls of steel, he's going to keep pushing down this lane. Anyway guys, so the story of the CM game, of course we get crushed, because the person who said he wanted to play Lashrak didn't actually play Lashrak. Oh, the top lane Stoy is going to take a stun from Demon Sphere. Pops his Mantis style illusion is going to go straight for the Nature's Prophet. Confuse him with that Hex. Demon, unfortunately, unable to get enough stunning duration for you to get close, although an Omni Slash does bring down the Nature's Prophet, who instantly buys back. Because in the meantime, his team has been going for Roshan. He's going to teleport in straight into the Roshan. Pop up some of those Treants. 
to tank up the damage, and this Roshan is gonna go down. Who's gonna pick this up? Naga Siren. Naga Siren is in there. I didn't even see her. So there's the Aegis. There's the Cheese on there. The cheese on Nexus. Windrunner has some pretty high importance. Uh, high items of high importance. You know, guys, sometimes the English language is a bitch. You know that? It's true. Now, M5, are they finally ready to push? They could, I guess, keep farming since they're going to have, like, two semi-damage dealers. Bot lane should be their target of choice, although mid lane is also fairly vulnerable. Rax is on the bot lane. Pretty much fully recovered from that last siege. Stalioner now with the tankier illusions could go straight in for these melee Raxes, which he is going to stick them on. Do a little bit of damage there. Ice Blast on the mid lane, I believe. Sedoi and Dread forcing a fight with Fear. Popped off his Man Style Illusion, so we're going to have a fight on two fronts, guys. If I miss a kill, that's because I'm clearly looking at the other fight. Stalioner is just going to sit here all day with those illusions. Send them in. And every time he sends them in, okay, we're going to have a pause there. Alright, so M5. Vastly in the lead with Golden Experience. And now I can finish the story of the very bad CM game. So, he says that uh, Viper will lose to a Faces Void in a 1v1 lane on a bot lane. And if you ever played Dota before, you know that Viper is, I want to say, the best at 1v1 lanes. I don't know, there's probably like some other hero that I'm not thinking of. But Viper could pretty much crush anyone in a 1v1 lane. And Faces Void has zero lane control so that's just plain wrong and also since apparently I don't know that Viper is will lose to a faces void then I'm an effing retard bro yeah that game made me really pissed because I can't believe that people are that stupid so guys if you if you believe that Viper can outlane a faces void on the bottom lane then please just find a friend and test it he doesn't even have to be a good friend, he can be a League of Legends player. Just tell him how Viper works, tell him how to orb walk, and then he will kick your ass even if your face is void. Stalioner, Solo, and Nexus can go straight for the melee Raxus. Teleportation coming in once again from J.O. Fear is here as well. Maybe you can use that Omni Slash onto Stalioner. Not in time though. Sleep. Stopping the show. Meantime, the top lane though, Sedoi finally <laughs> might bring down this tier 3 tower. No, Malk is here to defend. Sedoi's just been working on that tower all game long, unable to bring that down. The Edict damage is up, and Ravage being used only for Solo. Solo is so damn screwed. Juggernaut with the last hit there. The Raid Melee Raxes are still taking damage, but they're still alive with 160 HP. Nexus and Stalion are on the bot lane, trying to fight off versus 3. I do think they're capable of doing this if they get a good Shackle and bring down the Juggernaut, but I don't think they have enough damage for that, so it's probably not going to happen. Next, Demon getting four staffed in by his buddy, Malk. And, uh... EG just spread all over the place in the bottom lane. For, uh, the Omni Slash is going on Stallion. going to pop off those Mirror Illusions a little bit too late, though. He's going to take a Sonic Wave to the face, and Naga Siren is going to go down to the spin damage. Do they have enough Disable to actually kill her again? Malphus and Black Hole are both up. Stallion is going to walk right out of there. He's going to take a gush on the backside. B Diz Shackle not going to latch on the top lane. Meanwhile, Sedoi and Dread. Gonna hex up Fear. Ice Ball gonna land perfectly in Fear. Will he shatter from this? He's gonna pop up his Mantis Illusion, so he's not gonna shatter from this. Sedoi and uh, Sedoi is taking a ton of damage from these creeps, as well as some illusions from the Juggernaut. They do crit, and Fear is gonna go straight for Dread. Is forced to pop up the Ghost Scepter. Fear is an unstoppable beast. Sedoi, run! You have no chance here. Crit. 486. Crit again. Sedoi is gonna sprout himself and teleport away. He's gonna get out. Oh no, the Blade Fury from Through the Trees. Here gets another kill there as Dread is the one to teleport out. And another sleep setup from Stalioner gonna hex up Jo immediately. B Diz does not have any mana. He is unable to do anything. Naga Siren picking up one, Lashrak picking up the other. They're gonna look for a Demon who also is out of mana, but he blinks away. And now with three on the M5 side. Stalioner with the heart of Tarask is going to be regenerating his health very, very quickly. Of course, once the Eidolons stop attacking him. There you go. 72 HP regen. They have taken down the melee racks. They're gonna go for the range racks. Should be. Fairly easy to take down, especially with Edict hitting only that one building. There goes the range racks, and now M5. They got what they wanted from this bot lane. Fear has returned, but he's unable to do anything. Demon gonna blink straight in. Force Solo gets force staffed out by Nexus Pipe as well. Fear gonna get hexed up, but the Illusion's doing so much damage. The Pig is actually doing a little bit of body blocking, but Solo is on the run. He looks like he's gonna be okay. Split Earth is gonna hit onto Fear, and Solo's gonna keep on running. He is gonna survive with his life. 
In the meantime, Longest Iron Illusions, once again, on those melee Raxes. They're going to time out before they can actually take those down, however. So EG, they're down a Rax. They're down th only three kills, actually, but they do have a lot fewer towers. That would explain the gold graph, but the experience chart with only three kills deficit on EG, they're not that far behind. But still, you could you could just feel by how M5 are split pushing so powerfully, and EG are struggling. You could just feel it in the game. Of course, maybe I'm just saying that because I'm actually watching the game, but you should be able to like realize that EG are struggling right now. Fear is going to go for an assault caress, so he's going to try to counter push as much as he can through the auras. But you know what? M5, they could just do the exact same thing they did on the bot lane, except on the mid lane, take down another set of racks. Or even on the top lane, teleportation coming in on the top lane. BDiz is going to help in killing Sadoi with Jo and Demon. Sadoi is trapped, and he is going to go down to Jo. Getting a free kill on that Nation Prophet. Does have buyback, though. So he should be able to join the fight whenever he desires. Nagasan, does she still have Aegis? No, Aegis did get popped on the bottom lane. Of course. And now it looks like, well, the Ravage is up, but the Black Hole is not. It is. Does he want to fight this? He's got to be careful, because if he gets netted from Stalianer, he's pretty much screwed. He's going to run straight into fear. Dual time. Dual time. Oh. Well, that was kind of boring. <laughs> Stalianer's like, oh, wait, did I just pass a, did I just pass someone? I don't know. I didn't really get a good look at that. And fear just kept on trucking. He didn't even want to fight. Because Omni Slash, it's, uh, it could be mitigated pretty effectively by using your images. EG all onto this mid lane. This might just be to force out the buyback from Nature's Prophet. The tier 3 tower is down. They might want to take a rack set of their own. Stalioner setting up illusions on the bot lane. Shackle gonna lash speed is to Mal. This could be their chance if they want to go for it. Split Earth gonna fly as well. This rack are taking a lot of damage. The ward is up in the background, healing everyone from EG. They're very, very healthy. Fear gonna take a little bit of cold feet damage. Shackle beat is to a centaur. But they bring down this tide hunter. He's taking a ton of damage, but there's the mech. There's the hand of God as well. Arcane boots giving him more mana for that possible ravage. Fear now is going to take a net right in front of the tier, one, right in front of the Raxes. He's spinning though. He should be fine. The melee Raxes have gone down. And what are you doing, Solo? Going to land a split Earth onto Demon. He doesn't have much mana though. Next is here for the shackle onto a tree. Demon's going to take an ice ball as well. Not actually. He's not going to because he's dead. He's really dead. So EG managed to take one Rax. But they're still down with their entire bottom set. And Enigma does have buyback, so he is capable of defending this counter push coming out from M5. If they land the Ravage, if they land the Black Hole, and if everything comes together, EG should be able to do fine. If that doesn't happen, though, then M5 will just camp out, slow push it. Fear looking for Stalioner. Going to get hexed up as well as a net. Fear might go down to this mech. Is going to keep him at a little bit of high health but fear is taking a ton of damage still gonna dodge that ravage here comes demon with the black hole only on stalioner though but stalioner is deader than dead where did fear actually go i did not see how he got out jo is gonna give chase but he's not gonna find anyone no, he is gonna find someone solo he's still doing there solo you're dead now and eg take a fight that m5 i'm pretty sure that they just didn't expect nagas iron just got annihilated through that black hole Ravage was also used for that, so that's like EG's defense. Unfortunately for them, M5, they don't... Oh no, Nexus wants to go straight for Demon. The right-click damage plus the Focus Fire Manta Style also acquired. Demon's going to go down. Competition is coming in from J.O. Gets instantly sprouted, hexed, and shackled to a tree. Stoy is going to try to kill J.O. before J.O. kills him. J.O. does blink away, though. Malk also might be in a little bit of trouble because he's not as soft. He's not as uh, tanky as the Queen of Pain. I don't believe it. He's, he's definitely not. He shouldn't be. Ice Ball gonna fly and hit onto Jo. This Ice Ball is gonna hit literally everything in the base. Or, no, not really, but you know. As Nexus, as well as Doi, try to back out of there. Doi is long gone. The retreat is successful. Very interesting choice from the Windrunner to go for that Manta style. Reasoning behind this is that if you could have anything take one slash from that Omni Slash, well, then that's pretty much a good item. <laughs> Does ever give her some pretty good stats as well. And it'll help her in the pushing because, hell, M5, they've been sieging all day. Send the Treants in from Sadoi. Send the Illusions in from Stalion, who also has a Manta style. And now send the Illusions in from Nexus. And EG, they're just going to constantly take damage if they can't mitigate fear. Is going to get engaged upon. Net did, netted to the floor. The damage from M5 is way too much for a Juggernaut to handle. 
He's now dead. Buyback not up. So this could be M5's big chance. Juggernaut, the only source of damage from EG, is down. And everyone from M5 is still up. Looks like they're not going to go. You can't get Roshan. It's not even up yet. Just get the mid lane, guys. What are you doing? Come on. I think the mid lane is going to be the priority as they seem to be switching over there. But they don't know if the Juggernaut has buyback. But even if they don't know, they should be trying to force it out. Like, just push mid lane as much as you can. Then if, well, if Juggernaut buys back, then fine. You have the option to fall back in Roshan. If he doesn't buy back, well, then just take the racks. It looks like they're actually going to split up. Push down the bot lane, of all things. And they're see they seem to be okay taking Roshan. Sadoi has cleared up an item slot, so he might be taking the Cheese or the Aegis. Stalioner is probably the one that they want to have something on. Roshan is going to go down. Juggernaut not up for another 30 seconds. Unless he has enough buyback now. No, not. No, he's not going to have buyback until he's up again. And then buyback isn't going to help you. But Roshan does get taken down. Nagasan with the Aegis. Nexus is actually going to be the one with that cheese. I do feel like Sudoi is probably a better choice. Get that global presence going. Because he can just teleport right back into a fight if he does die. Well, I guess. Because buyback and teleportation is kind of like an Aegis. So, fair enough. It's all the same, really. Staliano, you gotta attack those things, man. M5 constantly dominating this map. Nexus and Solo on the bot lane. Pushing it out. Forcing people back here. Meantime, Naga Siren. Why are, you, why are you guys not pushing? Why, guys? I guess they know that the Black Hole and Epicenter... And the, uh... It's not Epicenter. The Ravage are up. But still, they should be pushing. Push, push, push. I guess they just want their two int semi carries to get a little bit more carry and less semi. Uh, did I finish my CM story? I'm pretty sure that was it. And he was like, 1v1, bro. And then I was like, normally I wouldn't. But since this is, this is just for a lane test, I'm more than happy. And then he was like, really mad. And I was just like, guy, why are you so mad? And and I can't tell stories while I'm actually watching this game so that was probably the worst story you ever told because I started at like the 15 minute mark Dragon take a hex but an instant response hex from Sudori Demon looking for a black hole perhaps he's gonna take Nature Prophet ultimate will it kill Demon? Nature Prophet actually not bouncing towards that enigma he's gonna go right into the trees but Demon is long gone from that teleportation split earth gonna latch onto beat his J.O. is going to, oh, there's the Ravage actually from Beat is catching three, gonna kill off Sadoi, Mech trying to keep him alive, Sonic Wave though says nay to that, J.O. now taking a little bit of damage, gonna blink out, is there any disable here, no, it's actually the mid lane where there's a party, Naga Siren has picked up the tier, the uh, mid melee Rax, while they were fighting on that top lane, and now the Rax is on, they're not gonna be under any threat, this Wilkin taking a lot of damage, but he's also holding the line, so yeah, that, uh, that CM story is probably the worst story you've ever heard because I've told it over the span of 50 minutes. And you, usually stories that last that long are pretty bad. And also, I apparently can't tell stories because it's really just the the one the point I wanted to get across is that uh, Faceless Void is not a good laner versus a solo lane Viper, guys. And if you think he is, then you're dumb. Like, there's no other way to put it. You're just wrong. I think that was it, at least. Also, I really suck at Dota. Like, I've been playing games recently, I've just been doing awfully. Like, really bad. Like, Clockwork? Did you know that Clockwork hookshot hits towers? I had no idea. I, like, I was gonna line up a perfect uh, hookshot onto... Who was it? Luna, I think? And then I just hit a building. I hit one of these, like, one of these buildings. And I was so pissed off. Because I was missing hookshots all game, of course. I mean, like, I'm a pro Clockwork player, you guys have no idea. But I'm like, buildings? Really? Made no sense. That's what's been going on with me. I'm good. I'm trying to get more FP VODs out for you guys, but... I don't know. The games I've been running into have been just so infuriating. Like, I had a game yesterday as Night Stalker where our Phantom Assassin just threw the game by not t picking up the Aegis. He, like, refused to pick up the Aegis, and we're just like, No, please just pick up the Aegis and carry us to victory. And he's like, No, guys, you take it. Ah. <sighs> Doesn't matter how far you get, how far ahead you get as Night Stalker. If you go for an Aghanim's build, you're gonna rely on someone else to do the damage. I should have went for like a Basher or something. So yeah, games have been really, really bad as of late. Really bad. I want to try the new AA. 
because I want to try that chilling touch. I don't know who it would be good on though, like as a lane partner. I guess CK would be decent because AACK is just a really good lane in general. But I don't know. I mean, it'll be really good on Meepo actually. <laughs> Get a high level Meepo and then chilling touch. What is that? I I guess it was uh. Did it get changed to 80? Oh no, that is the correct icon. Should be 80 damage per shot times 4 meepos. Oh yeah. I have no idea how that works, but it should be awesome nonetheless. Both teams are not doing anything. They're just like tending to their lanes and stuff like that. So that's why I'm continuing to ramble on about all sorts of things. I madly click around the map seeing some item progressions. Oh, a hex onto AA. Man, AA, why are you so farmed, man? Malk doesn't have a hex. Black hole onto someone. What? What happened? Did he force staff himself out? What? Infinity, you got it right, man. JO's gonna take a lot of damage from Sedoi now. Gonna send back to the base from Melk. Split Earth, gonna latch, but it's not enough damage to actually outright kill him. Fear getting swamped with Naga Siren Illusions. He's going to get Purge as well, and he's probably going to go down for this. Damage from Naga Siren, not that high, though. The only damage item she does have is that Diffusal Blade. She's going to stick her illusions on the range rack to do a lot of damage to that, actually. Nexus and Solo going to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the entire enemy team. Stoy is here as well to try to do a little damage. There's Ravage only hitting onto that Lashrak. Power Shot going to fly through Beat is, but really, it's the right clicks from Nature's Prophet ends as well as Nexus doing the real work right now. Split Earth going to miss Solo's BKB is popped by Demon. If he had Black Hole there, that would have been a pretty much clean sweep. Stalliander has picked up the range racks. He's now going to focus on the melee racks. Fear is here with the Battle Fury, and everyone actually from EG is here. Stalliander is going to keep them slept while the rest of his team work on one Tier 4 tower. Going to get the other Tier 4 tower. Very good use of that Nogasar Ultimate Jail. Going to blink right in. Going to land a Sonic Wave on three. Stoy is taking a huge amount of damage. He's probably going to go down to this. Yes, he will. But he does have a buyback, I'm sure. Dread taking a lot of damage as well. He's going to pop his Ghost Scepter and unleash an Ice Ball before he does go down. Chen probably not going to die from this one solo. Trying to juke into the trees. Teleport away. He doesn't even have Teleportation Scroll, so I don't know how he's going to teleport away from this one. Nexus, Stalliana are going to try to kill Demon. They are going to get him. And Fear is still doing the damage, but just not enough damage. The melee racks. The range racks, top lane, have gone down. Stalion is still very healthy with an Aegis as well. Draining all of Beat is his mana, doing a ton of damage to boot. And the Tidehunter is going to take yet another fall. And his next target is Jay, who does not have any... Oh, he does have mana to blink out, actually. Diffusal wasn't burning enough. Stalion is tanking the entire team, going to take a Hex. Malfour stabbing himself forward for the nuke. He's going to bring down that Naga Siren, at least her Aegis. Let's track to get killed by that Enigma. And now Stalion is going to... He could just turn around and kill Fear, like, quite honestly. A lot of Omni Slash damage, but look how much that Omni Slash did. It didn't even do half. The Juggernaut just simply does not have enough. And now, Nagas are an ultimate. Such bullshit cooldown on that level 3 ultimate. It's so low. It's insane. It really is. Oh, the rest of the fight is still going on, though, guys. As Nexus is going to pop off that pipe and run away with the Force Staff. But EG, they now have Mega Creeps bearing down on them. Omni Slash not up, and Juggernaut going to go for more lifesteal. If he sticks with Malk. Wait, no, he doesn't have Vlads. Who has Vlads? Zix with Demon, he's going to have enough lifesteal, but really, like, this Juggernaut doesn't do enough damage. This Juggernaut needs to be doing the damage versus Stalianer, who is doing damage. Guys, I'm pretty sure this is a good item to do damage. Nexus even has a Desolator, a freaking Desolator on Windrunner. Stalianer, Secret Agent Siren, we're going to keep our eyes on the person with the Divine Rapier this time. Who's he going to go for? Malk, two hit him. There's a net. Illusions, and he's going to get out of there with that Ghost after Stalianer's Illusions don't do a lot of damage because the damage from Divine Raper does not transfer over. But where is the right clicks? Not killing anyone. Kill J.O. Kill him, kill him, kill him. There's J.O. He's dead. Juggernaut has to pick up the Nature's Prophet, but the Illusions are going to work. Ravage hitting Dread just on the tip. A beat is taking a lot of damage. Demon slept right before he wanted to use that Black Hole. Where is the Naga Siren? She's just running away. Oh no, Nexus run. Stunned from Malphus. Gush? No, Nexus could probably go toe to toe with Beat doesn't win. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Windrunner is going to win this fight. It looks like it. Power shot, not enough. He's going to go toe to toe 1v3. Demon taking a ton of damage. He's going to go down. Shackle just for a mini stun. Now Malk, is there a 4 staff? Windrun is going to be the gap closer of choice. One more hit. Not going to be enough as he does get into the fountain. Next is just fountain farming all by himself. 4 staff out. Where the hell is Stalianer? There he is. Go do something with your Divine Rapier, bro. Omni Slash going to kill off that Windrunner. Now solo. Gonna miss that split earth winner and just buys back and here we go. Stalion are gonna end this game. No fortification. EG, they still wanna fight this. 
I guess they don't actually, as the uh, smiley face does come out from Demon. Smiley faces from everyone. Everyone's so they're so happy. Stalion is like, fuck this shit. I'm just gonna go end this game. So after a 58-minute game, guys, plus some really crappy story. That was like, I don't know. The story sounded a lot better in my head, but the story was actually really fucking bad. So excuse my profanity and boredom this game, but 58 minutes in with like 20 minutes of farm time, it's not exactly uh, great viewing material. So uh, if you're watching it to this point, great job. But also, really, you should find something else to do with your time. So thanks for watching, guys. Star Series Season 3, EG versus M5. This one goes to M5. GG, guys.